Our minds are designed to stop you at all costs from doing anything that might hurt you. We run away from fear. We like to run away and go, oh, it's not coming with me. And okay, let me actually discover that fear. Let me go intimate with that fear. Let me ask myself, where's that fear coming from? What am I really scared of? What am I scared of? And then go, why am I scared of this? Why am I scared of this? Why am I scared of this? And when you can't ask why any longer, you've got to the answer and that's what you have to deal with. Most of us are not dealing with what we're actually scared of. So many people look at uh, fear or even doubt, but they look at fear as if it's the emotional enemy. You know, it's the enemy emotion. Like, oh, I can deal with compassion. I can deal with love. I can deal with understanding. But when fear comes, oh my God, bad thing. No, first of all, change your relationship to fear. I've said this before. Fear is not the enemy. The feeling of fear is just like any other emotion. Fear is actually informing you. Fear is telling you that you need to do something. Either do more research, get some support, get some insight, study a little more, slow down. Fear is actually feeding you. So then ask yourself the question, what do I need to do, think, or go get to dissipate this fear? Your mind is thinking about it. All these dungeons that we've created, all these trap doors, most of the time we quit is because we don't have any mental tools to get us through the other side. So my whole thing for people is you have to examine why are you doing it in the first place? Everything is about perspective and what you consider a win. You know, some people think they're winning because other people think they're winning, even though they don't feel good about what they're doing. So I go, you think I'm winning, so that must mean I'm winning. But I feel like, that's not winning. You know, you have to know what makes you happy, what you consider a win. Not everybody's win is the same. Recognize that fear doesn't mean stop. People think, oh, I'm afraid, let me stop. Okay, that's a choice to stop. Fear doesn't necessarily mean stop. Fear might mean proceed with caution or proceed with more strategy. Whenever I'm feeling fear, it doesn't tell me, so I don't even think now to stop with fear. I do think to slow down, go get some help, go get some insight, voice my fear, so that it's not just all in my head. So don't try to outrun fear. Don't try to outrun doubt and definitely don't wait until doubt and fear are gone before you move. Find out what doubt and fear needs to dissipate into the nothingness that it always was. What does it need? And then understand that action brings clarity. So the more you move forward, the more action you're in, the more clarity you get because action breeds clarity. And clarity comes with action. Understand that doing the opposite of what most people do is what's going to lead to the to most success in your life in general terms. So when you see everybody else working to make their life easier, more convenient, less frustrating, basically looking to cut all the hard things out of their life, look at the rest of their life. That should be an indication to you that maybe you need to look at life a little bit different. When you really get after something, listen to me, total immersion in something, you can become unbelievably proficient at it. You'll get unbelievable at getting people to believe you believe it. You will be loaded with certainty from product knowledge to belief to skills, and you will be completely immersed with, I believe, no B plan. No other plan, no nothing out, completely immersed in it. Aside from dunking a basketball or hitting a 100 mile an hour fastball, these are things that are limitations to human means. But average ordinary people every single day succeed in the business of persuading people. There is no limitation to you being able to do it except those things. A good fighter is not necessarily the greatest fighter that will live. It's what, where you want to go. You know what I mean? Um, a good fighter just to be diligent and committed and disciplined, doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. You know, always testing yourself and forcing yourself to the limits. And one of the things that I see people do is they don't understand that you should actually be seeking out the proper obstacles 
that are going to teach you the lesson and embrace them so that you can be better. Because, dude, we could talk about and whine about and cry about everything in our lives, but there's only one thing that's going to change it, and that's actually taking action towards the place that you want to go. What you put in will produce the output. There's so many individuals out there that are so talented in different things and never accomplish anything. Okay, the world is filled with talented people. You know a lot of them yourselves. Okay, and they never accomplish anything. With talent has to come preparation, has to come action, has to come development of being able to take those talents, take those skills, continue to develop them, continue to sharpen them physically, continue to sharpen them mentally, because at some point, your physical talent is going to diminish as a professional athlete. That's just a fact, okay? But what keeps that competitive edge, what keeps you on top is the ability to think and prepare mentally over and over and over again. The body has limitations, the mind does not. We focus so much on what goes on from the neck down that we forget it all starts from here. Everything starts from here. If you're not mentally ready, you're never really physically prepared. And that's where the preparation starts. I firmly believe that everybody in this room, everybody on this planet has a gift. It's your job to figure out what that gift is. So when you see a, a situation that's difficult and you see a situation that you know other people don't want to do, you should maybe be the person who steps up to that and says, dude, I'm willing to do that because I learned this. I'm willing to take on that because I'm willing to get the skill. Um, I'm going to endure this adversity because I know it's going to make me stronger. All right. So look at these as an opportunity for you to grow as opposed to something that you should run away from because it's going to be difficult. This is something that champions and successful people, people who are great at what they do and live great lives that bring other people up do automatically. Embrace your adversity and look for opportunities to get better and grow. Thinking it was possible. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's what we have to do with our dreams. Because things happen to you in life that you can never ever anticipate. And many times when those things happen, you wanna give up. When you know within yourself that there's something you wanna do, and I believe that all of us were born with a purpose, that all of us have something that we are supposed to do. That all of us have some goodness within us and that goodness gives us a responsibility to manifest our greatness. And when you know that, you can feel it in your guts and you know that you're deliberately operating below your potential, you've gotten comfortable. You stop expanding, you stop stretching, you stop challenging yourself. Let me share something else with you. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary. It's necessary that you have it, that you work on it, that you develop yourself, that you go for what is yours in the universe. Tell me one thing, one thing in your life that is great that came as a result of being comfortable. Because everywhere I look and everywhere I, I, I see in today's society, everybody's doing everything they can to be more comfortable, right? They're looking for the more convenience. They're looking for the quicker. They're looking for the faster. And see, there's opportunity in that for those of you that want to get better. Because I'm going to tell you right now, all the great things in my life, all the great things in other high achievers' lives, all the reasons that these successful people that you look up to, that you aspire to be like, are the way they are, have all come from a place of being uncomfortable. It's possible you've got some talents, some ideas in you, your ability to do some stuff that you haven't even discovered yet. And I'm suggesting that it's necessary that you get outside of your comfort zone. It's necessary that you develop some new relationships where you can learn from people. It's necessary that you do reading, that you do research. It's necessary if you're already involved in some business that you don't be satisfied with where you are. If you want to make it today, it's necessary for you to constantly look at ways of getting better. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, 
and it's necessary for you to challenge yourself to go after it and get better and leverage relationships that can help you get to where you want to go. But it's you. The major key to your reaching your dream, your living up to your greatness, your making your contribution is you. I want you to max out your life. I want you to max out your business. You were made to do something great with your life, weren't you? And you've always known it. There's always been this little voice in your head since you were a little boy or a little girl. You've always known there was something special about you. Those of us that have faith in the room, we know we were made as a masterpiece. We know the Lord looks like us, looks at us like we can do anything with our lives. You weren't born to be average. You weren't born to have a mediocre existence on this earth. You were born to do something great, and that's why you're in this room. It's by no mistake that you've always had those thoughts, that intuition. If the economy is good, fantastic. If the banks are loaning money, that's great. If people are positive, that's great. You don't have any opposition, that's great. But the major key so you're making things happen in your life is you. When you're trying to avoid the pain, when you're trying to avoid the struggle, when you're trying to avoid the hard things in life, you are actively choosing to be average. You are actively choosing to be mediocre. And you are actively choosing to move further away from what you want in life. Because that hardship and that pain and that struggle and that frustration, they give you the skills that will forge you into a mother champion. All right, so remember that shit when you try to take the easy route. The easy route never pays well. The only route in life that pays well is the hard route, the struggle, the pain, the frustration, and the overcoming of those things. And not only do they pay, they fulfill you as well because it shows the people around you. It shows your kids, it shows your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your community, what is possible. And there's nobility in that.